This is USVI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for USVI News. I'm Emily Matson. The AARP of the Virgin Islands is launching a special concert event in honor of Older Americans Month. There will be music by Stanley and the 10 Sleepless Nights and a celebration of culture at senior homes all throughout the territory. Our USVI News, Ali Bornvenek, has the details on when and where you can catch the action. The ARP of the Virgin Islands is kicking off an exciting month of May with several celebrations in honor of Older Americans Month. These celebrations will happen at senior homes throughout the territory and are being called an old time serenade. Helping to make this possible, the AARP is teaming up with the First Lady, Yolanda Bryan, along with Stanley and the Ten Sleepless Nights, Department of Tourism, VI Lottery, and the VI Council of the Arts. The theme of Older Americans Month is Age My Way. The AARP shares how this is a reminder that older adults remain and continue to be involved in communities and the Virgin Islands, and how connecting and engaging with them is an important part of building stronger communities that continue to grow for generations to come. These old-time serenades will kick off first on St. Croix on May 14th, then on St. Thomas on May 21st, and then St. John on May 22nd. Stay tuned to CBS USVI as we join the community and celebrate Older Americans Month. The former premier of the British Virgin Islands is facing life in prison on charges of drug smuggling and money laundering. The charges stem from a U.S. Drug Enforcement, or drug enforcement Administration sting. Andrew Foy, along with the BVI Ports Director, are facing charges for allegedly trying to import large amounts of cocaine into the U.S. from Colombia through its BVI ports. They were arrested at a Miami airport last month. On Wednesday, federal prosecutors filed a three-count indictment against Foy and BVI Ports Director Oline Bine Maynard and her son, Kadeem Maynard. Foy has requested to be released from prison. His bond set at $500,000, but his release is on hold right now because prosecutors appealed the bond, arguing he is a flight risk. Foy was removed as premier last week. Foy is set to plead not guilty to the charges at an arraignment, which is set for May 25th. Now to an update on the deaths of three Americans at a Sandals resort in the Bahamas. Our USVI News, Deandra Hamilton, has the very latest. Three days and it continues to be that incredible tragedy that hit the Bahamas' regatta capital of Exuma, home to the swimming pigs. The headlines now blazing a different kind of amazing story. Three Americans found unresponsive in their luxury villas at Sandals Emerald Bay. Up to Monday evening, no cause of death was confirmed. The lone survivor on holiday with her husband, with whom she was celebrating an anniversary, was initially medically evacuated to Nassau then to South Florida. So here are the official details as they came in. Police of the Georgetown Police Station were informed by staff at the resort shortly after 9 a.m. on Friday that a male was found unresponsive. While on the scene, the officers were informed that an additional male and female, later identified as 68-year-old Michael Phillips and his wife, 65-year-old Robbie Phillips, were found unresponsive in their villa. Minister of Health Dr. Michael Darvel told the Tribune newspaper that two of the visitors were treated at Exuma's clinic because they were experiencing nausea. He also noted that the doctor on call recommended that they be airlifted to New Providence, but they refused. The man found in the first villa is identified as 65-year-old Vincent Chiarella from Panama, Florida. He was at the resort with his wife, 64-year-old Donis. Acting Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism Chester Cooper said while the cause of death was unknown, he was advised that foul play was not suspected. However, it was reported that the three deceased showed signs of convulsions. Meanwhile, on Monday, Police Commissioner Paul Wold said samples from the three victims were to be sent to a lab in the U.S. for a toxicology report. He also said samples were taken from the rooms to determine whether contaminants were present. Sandals Resorts International, meanwhile, have said they are cooperating with authorities and respecting their guests' privacy, offering no further comments. DeAndre Hamilton reporting. Such a sad story, and of course, we'll keep you updated as things develop there. President Biden says his administration is tackling inflation to help lower costs for American families. It comes as inflation takes center stage in the run-up to the midterm elections. Deborah Alfaron has the very latest from the White House. 
President Biden told Americans he feels their pain. I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously and it's my top domestic priority. The president blamed the pandemic and Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine for soaring inflation as Americans take another hit at the pump. Gas prices reached a new record overnight, according to AAA, now averaging $4.37 for a gallon of regular. You got to figure it out. You got to pay for rent, no food. It's hard. President Biden announced no new policies but touted action like the release of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. He also took aim at congressional Republicans, saying they'll make things worse on the wallet. They don't want to solve inflation by lowering your costs. They want to solve it by raising your taxes and lowering your income. Republicans pushed back. Pointed his finger at everybody else other than himself and the American people are sick and tired of it. Inflation is quickly becoming a top issue heading into the November midterm elections. And some economists warn that even if prices subside, there still could be some long-term effects. I do think the pandemic will fade, and I think of the worst of the fallout of the Russian invasion of Ukraine on our economy is behind us. But it's not going to uh, get back to anything we consider to be normal very quickly. So to help you find the lowest fuel prices in the VI, we want to remind you about an app called Save More VI, which shows you what the prices are at each gas station in the territory. U.S. VI News' Ali Bourne has more from the app's founder. I'm here with Leslie Comision, and we are here to talk about this super exciting app. I've already downloaded Leslie take it away. So we wanted to give Virgin Islanders a tool that would enable them in the palm of their hands to be able to look and see where the cheapest gas prices were on St. Thomas, St. Croix, and St. John. So that's what this app does. Um, we get information from our users. Uh, we get information. I drive around and verify prices, but there is a feature that if you see an updated price, whether it's adjusted upwards or downwards, you can adjust it in the app. So the whole concept is to help Virgin Islanders save more. That's what it's called, Save More VI. This is all about information, and we live in the information age, and the more information consumers have, the better armed that they are. So we're really excited about the feedback we're, we've been having. There's been several thousand downloads on the, on the app so far, and we're excited about that. And I'd like to really give a shout-out to Commissioner of Licensing and Consumer Affairs, Richard Evangelista, for having the vision and partnering with us. This cost the department nothing, but they have helped us to launch it and to promote it and uh, to get it in the hands of Virgin Islanders and really it serves a dual purpose in being a tool for consumers which the department's responsibility is to protect consumers and it helps to do that as well. And despite sky-high prices there's a bit of good news when it comes to inflation. The rate of inflation didn't change much in the last month offering hope that Rapid price increases might soon cool off, but again, inflation rates are still extremely high right now. According to data released by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics on Wednesday, consumer prices rose 0.3% in April after rising 1.2% in March. Compared with one year ago, the inflation rate grew 8.3% in April. It was 8.5% in March. Households are certainly feeling the squeeze of rising prices right now. The largest increases for April were seen in airfares, food, including meat and bread, shelter, and new vehicles. The pandemic days of extra room and more attention on planes are over. Flight demand is up, and a new study from J.D. Power finds airline passenger satisfaction is down. Airports are crowded, plane seats are filled, and wallets are wheezing. All reasons some passengers aren't too thrilled to be flying. It is more difficult, there's more delays, it's harder to get seats, everything's more expensive. Now it's becoming very expensive for uh, us to like travel. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, airfares rose more than 33% over the last year, the largest 12-month increase since 1980. And the latest study from J.D. Power found airline passenger satisfaction took a nosedive over the last year. Airplanes are becoming full again, and that tends to make satisfaction go down. JetBlue scored the top spot for first or business class and for premium economy, while Southwest led customer satisfaction in the economy segment. Other airlines have room for improvement. But the things that you probably need to, to, to work on are improving the comfort of the aircraft in all cabin classes, 
uh, and uh, working on people skills to make people feel less like cattle and more like valued passengers. This study comes as carriers and airports gear up for the busy summer travel season, which is expected to see pre-pandemic passenger volume. We expect this to be a busy summer, um, and uh, we are as ready as we possibly can be. We're likely going to exceed in some airports, by good measure, the, um, the 2019 numbers. The Transportation Security Administration says it is staffed up and also investing in new technology to help speed up the process for those summer vacations. The TSA says it screened on average more than 2.1 million travelers a day in April and May.